As we open the duct tester case, we'll see a variety of items inside. This includes a roll of white vinyl tape to attach the flange to the system, the flange that we use to attach the flex to the system, a bag of orifice plates or ranges as we call them, a power cord to plug the fan into a power source, the four inch duct that's used to connect the fan to the flange, and if your kit includes it, a depressurization drum for pulling a negative pressure on the system. The Model 400X commercial duct tester fan and the DM32X manometer. And we've also included a static pressure probe and some tubing fittings. To attach the flex to the fan, insert the small end of the flex into the outlet of the fan on the side. Then you can tighten down the hose clamp with either a screwdriver or a drill. Be sure not to over tighten, it just needs to be snug. Next, you'll take the flange and attach it to the system, either on the plenum or the cabinet, whatever part of the HVAC system that you're gonna access. You can either mechanically fasten the flange using the pre-drilled holes, or you can use the included white vinyl tape like we've done here. Once the flange is attached, then you can just slide the other end of the flex onto it. Retrotech's orifice plates are called ranges, and they come in a variety of sizes from 74 millimeters in diameter down to 11, yet they can be purchased in smaller sizes down to one millimeter. To change ranges, simply pop the existing range out of the inlet side of the fan and swap it with the one that you need. If you cannot reach your target pressure on channel A of the gauge, that means you need to go up a range. Or if you can reach your target pressure, but you're not getting a flow on channel B, that means you need to go down a range. Next, we'll remove the DM32X manometer from its storage case. The manometer has a magnetic back that can stick to the metal plate on the fan shell. This is an ideal place to keep it during a test to prevent somebody from stepping on it and damaging it. On the other side of the manometer case, you'll find the umbilical. The umbilical is used to connect the manometer to the fan. On top of the manometer, you'll see a series of color-coded pressure ports. There's also a CAT5 jack in the middle that the speed control cable will plug into. We'll then connect the yellow tube from the umbilical to the yellow port on the manometer, as well as the green tube to the green port. There's also a separate blue tube that you'll find in your kit. This will connect the manometer to the duct system. On the other side of the fan is where we plug in the other end of the umbilical. We'll plug the other end of the speed control cable into the end jack and then we'll plug in the green tube to the green port and the yellow tube to the yellow port. The other end of the blue tube will go to the duct system. You can connect it to the blue port that is on the flange that connects the duct to the HVAC system. If you'd rather measure duct pressure in a different location, you can use the included static pressure probe instead. Lastly, you will plug in the power cable to the fan and the other end to a power source. Then you will flip the power switch to turn the fan on. Now you're ready to set up the manometer and take a reading. To power on the DM32X manometer, press the button on the top right. Once the manometer boots up, you'll see three apps on the bottom of the screen. You'll press the one on the bottom left to launch the manometer app to take a reading. Once the gauge app is launched, the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is make sure everything is set up correctly. We'll start by making sure that the correct fan is selected. Right now we have a blower door selected, so we'll wanna change that by clicking on the model number and then scrolling to make sure we have the model 450 selected. We can tap the heart to favorite it so that it will be at the top of the list from now on. Next, we wanna select the range that's installed into the fan. Here, we're gonna start with range 74, so we wanna make sure that the fan and the manometer are matching. Next, we wanna make sure we're reading inches of water on channel A. Here, we're reading Pascal, so we'll just tap on that to change it. 
we'll select inches of water from the list and that'll take us back home. Next, we wanna make sure we're reading CFM on channel B. Here we're reading pounds per square foot, so we wanna tap that, scroll down to flow and select cubic feet per minute. Again, we can favorite it to make sure it'll be at the top from now on. Now that the manometer is set up and ready to go, we have our proper fan and range selected, and we have inches of water on channel A and CFM on channel B, we will use the slider at the bottom of the screen to adjust our fan speed and reach our target pressure. Here we are going to target six inches of water column, so we will take our finger and slide it across the bottom below the fan to reach that pressure. Now that we have reached six inches of water column, we can see now that our flow on channel B is about 248 CFM. So that is the flow that we would report uh, for this duct leakage test at six inches of water column. And if you don't want to use the slider on the gauge, you can use the dial on the fan instead. To do so, make sure you unplug the speed control cable from either the fan or the manometer. That will free up the dial so that you can adjust fan speed manually. When you explore the settings in the manometer, you may notice that there is a feature that will allow you to automatically target a desired pressure. However, we recommend avoiding this uh, so that you do not overshoot or target pressure and cause damage to the duct system. This is why we recommend to either use the slider on the gauge or the manual dial to gradually increase duct pressure with the fan so that you do not overshoot. One common question that we get is, what happens if I cannot reach my target pressure? So in this scenario, we are gonna shoot for six inches of water column, and we're gonna use our slider at the bottom of the DM32X to keep increasing fan speed. As we get up to 100% fan speed, we can see that we still aren't quite reaching six inches of water column. So here we're at 100%, and you can see we're at about 5.3 inches, so we're not quite there yet. So that means we need to go up a range. We need to increase the size of the hole on the inlet side of the fan. So we're gonna swap range 47 out for range 74. Not only do we need to do this on the fan, but we need to do this on the manometer also. So we'll tap on range 47 and then select 74 from our list of options to make sure that the manometer matches the fan. Now we'll increase fan speed and run the test again. And we can see that as we keep increasing, we have some room left. Uh, so now we're going to reach six inches of water and now we'll have an accurate flow reading on channel B. So here, as we reach six inches, we can see that our flow in CFM is about 267 CFM. You'll run into a similar issue if your range is too large. So here you can see we can reach six inches, but we're not reading a flow on channel B. That means we need to decrease the size of our range. So on the fan, we will remove range 74 and we'll swap it down to the next one down, which is range 47. Now, as we're running the test again, uh, we can see we can reach six inches of water again, but now we see a flow on channel B. So if you can ever reach your target pressure, but you're not reading a flow, that means you need to choke down the hole size to a smaller range on the inlet side of the fan.